Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's presentation on web marketing best practices from top MSPs. Um, I'm Pierre Mould, the Senior Marketing Manager here at Pronto, and I'm joined today by Chris Thompson, the head of our search and advertising practice. And we've got a really exciting uh, topic to cover. And with no further ado, I'll hand it over to you, Chris. Thanks, Pierre. So, um... There's always a danger that companies can get stuck into in their own bubble. So it's really important for us to go out and uh, look at competitors and look at the top um, websites in particular industries to see what other people are doing and see if there's anything that kind of reaffirms of what we're doing or if there's anything that we think um, is something that we could use as well for our clients. Um, the So the core... Uh, the 10 core website elements that we came across when we were doing our investigation were the use of eyebrows, which we'll explain what they are in a minute, uh, reviews, descriptive SEO optimized headers, awards, company stats, location pages, and Surfer SEO. We'll explain what they are if you're not too sure. Forms or uh, onboarding process and pricing. And the way we chose these websites were in two, two ways. One, we went to Clutch, uh, which is um, a very popular directory that uh, prospects use when looking for MSPs. We went to Clutch and looked at the top rated um, MSPs in Clutch and then went to their websites. And we also looked at um, websites competing for competitive keywords in competitive locations. Like, for example, Managed IT Services, Los Angeles. All right, let's jump in. So first website, Integris. Um, what they're doing here is using eyebrows. And so this is a small text that's um, above the larger heading. Eyebrows are really good um, for SEO because there's always a struggle um, when adding a keyword into a heading that you want to um, show off some personality and explain what the page is about, but you're also kind of strapped into using this keyword um, exactly how someone would type it. So this is kind of the best of both worlds where you can add your exact match keyword in the eyebrow whilst um, also having a heading that explains a little bit more about um, what you offer, what the page is about, and it's also great to have this blurb here. Right, and usually there's a little bit of a trick going on here because usually the um, the H1, the primary number one headline that you know Google is looking at to determine the, the focus of a page is the, the bigger headline that you see here, which is you deserve a better IT support experience. But you can actually code this in such a way that your H1 is the smaller uh, headline, which in this case is IT support Dallas. Um, and, and so you're kind of able to adjust based on that and without having to, you know, stuff your keyword too much, still look natural. Um, and and I think it, it it's an effective way of doing it. You know, if you've clicked on IT support Dallas on Google and then you land here, you, you, you know, quickly see IT support Dallas. So, you know, you're in the right place, but then you're also able to have your main, like bigger headline uh, be more about, the, the benefit that you get as a user. So it's, it's a neat example, Chris. Awesome. Yeah, I think it's visually appealing too. I think it's a really nice touch to use eyebrows. All right, reviews. So this is actually an example from one of our clients. Um, we created a, a Google Ads landing page, and but, but we've seen this a bunch of times through across um, a, quite a few websites utilizing reviews is super important um it it helps build trust and credibility and especially if we use it in the heading area of a web of a web page um then it gets it immediately makes someone feel um confident in your website and gives a really great first impression so as they're scrolling through your website because they've already established um, that you're an established company and your customers love working with you just gives them a great first impression so that everything else is seen through those that lens. And I like how this is a different way of using eyebrows. You know, it, it really shows a, a, a different approach to it. And in the previous example, it was more in the case of a location page and an SEO play. 
Um, and in this case, you know, you could actually have this set up either for a location page, but this would also be very applicable to a landing page for a Google Ads campaign. Uh, and, and having that there would, would work really well too. Great. Okay, and here's another one, another example. Um, Integris again. So they're, they're keeping it in their um, header hero section of the website above the fold. So uh, this above the fold means basically what appears on the screen without scrolling. And so, yeah, this is another another idea that um, the websites can use when they're adding reviews to their header hero area of the website. Yeah, and I think we're, we're showing a lot of you know, best practices today. And what we're also trying to kind of convey is that there's not just one way of doing your your layout and right. where you place things. Uh, obviously there are general uh, best practices like you mentioned above the fold. I think that's sort of the key here is making sure you review whether it's above or below the main headline. It is that it's above the fold and it's something people can see quickly and have an impact right away. Exactly. All right, I really love this example. Um, it's rare that you'd see reviews on a contact us page. I haven't seen many um, MSPs do this, but I think it's a really nice touch. Um, when someone co is coming to your contact us page, they're more than likely gonna send you a message, but some might not. And so a review is just just nudges them um, towards your form that it just really like pushes them over the edge. Like, okay, don't worry, you're in safe hands. We've got these, uh, we've had customers like you before and they love us. Look at our great reviews, you're in the right place fill in that form. So I think it's a really nice touch to just kind of nudge them towards the form and get that uh, filled in. Yeah, nice clean example, Chris. Great. I and also it doesn't just have to be on the contact us page. It can be wherever a form is. So if you have a form on a landing page, um I think it's a great idea to put a review there and like I say just nudges them to fill in that form. Yeah, very good point. All right, so we've got descriptive SEO optimized headers. So um, some people, and this goes for home pages, but also landing page, service pages and other landing pages. Some people might just have a H1, just one line uh, header heading with some text explaining what the page is, maybe a keywords in there. But it's great to have um, more text in the hero area. Um, one, because it explains to the user where they are and so they know they're in the right place. But also Google likes to see important keywords near the top of the page. So this is especially better than if you have a hero or kind of heading section with a big image, but just one line of text. You want to fill in that empty space with some more text like this. So here it's got um, a header, a heading text IT support in New York City. So they're including the keywords in there that they're trying to rank for. Um, they've got another line here. This could be slightly bigger, I think, um, just to make it a bit more visually appealing and separate it from the blurb below it, but still great. And it mentions again in the blurbs, um, important keywords they're trying to rank for. Yeah. And this applies to ranking organically uh, on Google, but it also applies if you're running Google ads, uh, you know, having that sort of right sort of keyword there in, in your headline will help improve your quality score. Um, so uh, yeah, an, an effective um, approach there. Great. Okay, awards. Um, similar to reviews, they're, they're great for enhancing your credibility and reputation and differentiates you from your competitors. So if you have rewards, some people might leave them on an awards page specifically for that, but pull them out of there and put them in important places in the website where you think users might need um, a nudge or something to convince them to keep going, to keep exploring your website. So um, other than on an awards page, I always really recommend that you can also put them in the header area, the top part of your page, on the home page or on service pages, like the areas we were just looking at. Um, again, similar to reviews, it gives users um, a good first impression of your company. And so all other pages they look at seen through that lens 
of an award-winning company. Yeah, and I, I think the reality is if you don't have any awards yet, um, this is something you should you know consider uh, sort of investing in and trying to figure out how can I win an award. Uh, here we're showing CRN, which is a very famous uh, you know news source for for channel partners. Uh, and, but there are other um, awards that you can win, uh, such as Clutch Awards. Uh, and Clutch Awards are won by getting more reviews. Uh, there's, you know, Channel Futures also has awards. Uh, and sometimes you have to be nominated. Uh, you have to nominate yourself. Or, you know, sometimes it's based on achieving certain things, achieving certain certifications. Or, um, But, um, you know, definitely something that you should be looking to, working towards to, and, and be intentional about. Uh, because eventually, um, it, it will bring a lot of credibility with, with new people who were meeting you for the first time. Great. Okay. Um, another of my favorite slides in this presentation is company stats. Um, I, not many of, uh, not many of our clients, um, know their stats like, um, but it's extremely worth looking into numbers have a unique persuasive power when someone's looking at, um, the information on your website, they're a tangible representation of what your company's doing. And so when users see numbers or they see that you've done your research and due diligence about how um, you interact with your clients and how long it takes for, uh, for you to answer their calls, they know that you've, you're, um, you've just done your research and the, the content on your website isn't just fancy words, it's hard research as well. Yeah, those are really powerful stats. I mean, people want to know you're going to be ready to answer their call. Uh, and then, you know, as a prospect, you know, evaluating a, a, an MSP, uh, those are the things you want to know. And if you can provide that information before getting on a sales call, uh, one that will save you time, but that will also, you know, better educate uh, your prospects before they even talk to you. Okay, yeah, here's another example how DCG has done it. So DCG has a reputation stretching back 30 plus years and 184 clients. Um, so this is another example of kind of stats that you can um, get and add to your website if uh, if you haven't got anything like the previous slide. Yeah, and absolutely. If you can use both, I you know we definitely recommend using both in different sections. They they serve different purposes, and and right. uh, yeah, having those kind of as well, sort of very specific, like one hundred and eighty four, also does convey sort of a more credibility. Um, yeah, that's a good point, Pierre. If you're going to add a number, try to be specific. Um, it's much more convincing. All right, so Surfer SEO, for anyone who hasn't used it before, is an on-page SEO optimization tool. Um, it basically looks at the top 10 results for any keyword that you're, you want to do some research on. It pulls in the content that these pages in the top 10 are using and then suggests to you um, keywords and secondary keywords, content length, and how often you need to use these keywords um, in your page when you're writing the content. And so what we've seen in these top websites is that they're scoring high um, with Surfer's content score. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a tool we use internally when, when we help client optimize their pages. Um, so uh, if, if you're able to use it, that's awesome. If you need help, we're, we're, we're here to help. And I think the other thing to see here is that you know, don't always obs obsess about getting a perfect score of 100. Um, you know, try to follow more of an 80-20 type rule and 80% will likely, you know, get you to where you want. And uh, some of those SEO tools, uh, they're, they're, they're compasses more than, you know, the, the Bible, right? They don't, don't expect that you need to have that perfect green score. As soon as you kind of turn into the green, usually you're in the right direction. And, and I think this is a good, uh, sort of highlight of that, that, you know, if you have a score of 73, um, you, you know, you may be good enough. Right. And just to explain this last score, you might be wondering um, how then the top 10 with a score of 10. Um, like 
Pierre said that there are lots of different factors that Google's looking at, one of which is backlinks. Backlinks are super important. So they're basically links pointing to your website from other websites. Google looks at how many backlinks a website has. So it could be um, that this, this page that hasn't got a great content score has a lot of backlinks. So ideally, to maximize your chances of appearing in the top 10, you're going to want to kind of tick all of these boxes. But like Pierre said, use the 80 20 rule. Once you start to get into the green, pushing, um, spending time to get to 100 might not be worth it. Yeah. And a couple of other things to consider um, on, on this slide, Chris, is one, there is a big difference between ranking number one and number 10. So um, right. while being on, on, on the first page is great, or, or number nine, rather, it, it, being on the, you know, on the first page is great, but you get a lot more traffic if uh, you're number one. The other thing is here, you may notice that um, it's showing results for number one, uh, but not number two and number three. This is potentially because uh, number two and number three results are not actual competitors or companies. Uh, they could sh be showing other type of results uh, that are more about, you know, um, um, recommendations or um, directories like Clutch or UpCity or Cloud Tango, uh, which, uh, you know, realistically are, are a bit sort of different types of um, organic results. So I think that's likely what's going on. Is that is that correct, Chris? Yeah, that's right. Um, basically, what we want to do is when we're using Surfer, we want to compare like for like. So we want to compare um, a home page with other home pages or a service page with other service pages, just because um, Surfer is looking at the, the competitors that we choose and we want to write content similar to the pages that we have. So if we want to write a directory, or content for a directory, then we choose Clutch. But if we want to write content for a service page, then we won't. Yeah. And that's, yeah. So all of the, the missing numbers are likely directories that we've excluded as the com as they're not a good comparison. All right. Um, so I briefly spoke about or mentioned location pages before. Um, with DCG, we saw that they have a lot of location pages. And for anyone who's not sure what a location page is, they are a game changer for service area businesses. So if you have an office or you work completely remote, but you serve in your local area or in your state, um, you're going to want to create location pages for the cities in your area that you're able to serve so that when someone's searching for um, Cloud Solutions Los Angeles, your page is more likely to rank because it's targeting exactly that keyword. And if you're able to travel to Los Angeles, even if you're not located there, and but you can still do business there, then it's a great idea to create these location pages. And DCG... Um, they definitely know the value in location pages and a lot of these top MSPs have invested a lot of time and money into creating these location pages so they can rank um, often in their local area in different cities. And one one thing to, to remember is to not overdo it and try to think, okay, is there enough traffic volume uh, in this location to be worth it? Uh, and then kind of consider, you know, how a, you know, people in different metro areas or, in, you know, how close different cities are and whether um, you, you actually need multiple or just a single location page. But, you know, evidently here you can see that there are a lot of pages of different uh, cities in, in the, sort of the, the larger LA metro area. And, um, and you can see some have higher um, dollar value than others. Um, so... That, that kind of gives you a little bit of a, an indication on where you want to focus or not. Right, definitely. Yeah, you, you don't want to um, go out the gate building 100 pages without any kind of research behind it. You, like you mentioned, you want to look at um, keyword volume and yeah, and if, if it's worth, and also one thing you need to look out for is that if you're going to build um, a location page in a competitive area, there are other things other than um, content, you would need to build links. And links also take time and resources. So you need to think, is that um, city 
where you want to um ha have you got enough re um time and resources to create a page for that city and is it close enough to your business that you would want to do business there so there so it's not always about just building location pages and, and never stopping but also thinking about which ones are worth building yep. all right forms so forms go unnoticed sometimes but they really do enhance the user experience and they can help you get some uh data that might help your marketing campaigns or just research of um, where your customers are um Notably here, we've got number of employees, which some forms might not have for an MSP, but this is a great way for you to filter out any um, unqualified leads that might be coming to your website. For example, it might be um, a personal issue, like someone's personal computers, they can't switch it on. So they're, they're searching for IT support, they come across your website and they send you a message, hey, my computer can't switch on, I don't know why. Um, but if they come to this form and they see these questions that only the right type of uh, prospect would understand, then they, they'd likely realize that this isn't the company for them. Yeah, and Chris, I think you can go ahead and click, I think just to, yeah. And here we can see the, the different elements of this form and kind of what you're highlighting in terms of uh, personal email accounts. Um, sort of what are the type of qualifying questions uh, that may help. Great, thanks, Bia. And yeah, this last one as well, um, having a clear CTA, talk about um, removing anxiety from users um, in the uh, some of the next slides, but having a clear CTA, book a consultation, really helps users know what's going to happen next. Like when they click that button, there's no question. Uh, if it says... Um, submit, then, okay, so, um, what's going to happen next? But here it's, it's very clear that they're going to book a consultation. So just little little touches like that can really um, improve the user experience. All right, onboarding process. So, yeah, I just mentioned about kind of removing anxiety. I think this is a really nice touch for, for that, especially when um, you're, you're about to purchase a service. It's not cheap and it's going to do a lot for your business um you're gonna you're gonna have a lot of questions and so if you can remove as many of these questions from the prospect as possible it's going to make them feel a lot more comfortable working with you so here um they've got an onboarding process and the prospects will think ah oh, they have a plan i feel safe and they know what's going to happen next so you can see here starting off with initial it assessment client alignment, IT audit, IT roadmap, plan execution, ongoing IT services. And if actually, if you click on any of these numbers, then this kind of blurb to the right is going to change and tell the user a bit more about it. So I think this is a really nice touch. Yeah, and I think, you know, really kind of trying to show this process upfront on your website will help you have better sales conversations. Uh, you know, when you get on that phone call, uh, prospects, should have been exposed to this and have a better idea of, okay, how are things going to go? How are they going to flow? And, you know, you'll, you know, if you have a very strategically thought out process, it, you know, it will help people not trying to rush things and, and sort of dis, disregard the process. I think you want to follow it as much as possible. There, there's a reason why you do things in this order and you have, you spend the time to having an audit. Uh, so yeah, right. this, this is a nice um, layout as well. Great. Yeah, and it's not common. So if you want to separate yourselves from your competitors, I think this is a great um, way to go. Okay, and here's another example. Um, a simpler one, um, just above a contact us form. This is for a Google Ads landing page. Um, but if it just nice types to let users know that, okay, this what's going to happen next after you fill in your basic info is that you're going to reserve a meeting and then receive a confirmation. So it's just a nice little touch, nice little simple touch to let the user know what's going to happen next. All right, message from the president. Um, I think this is a great touch. Again, um, like I said before, anything that can um, help make your content look different 
from other MSPs is great because a lot of the ser well, the, a lot of the services are the same. So sometimes it can be a struggle to add your personal touch um, to your website. So company stats is one way, reviews, awards, but also message from the president. I think is a really nice way to do that. Yeah, and this is a good combination of you know using uh, an image uh, to humanize as well as um, showing your your service guarantee there. You know, you see a nice big logo and uh, that says hundred percent service guarantee. Um, so yeah, it's just a nice kind of segment overall. Well, well designed, well thought out. Great. All right, last one and. Um... Yeah, maybe a controversial one is pricing. So um, I'm going to read a quote from this book called They Ask You Answer, which is a marketing book, basically um, about how to understand what your customers want from you. And so being clear about your costs helps people qualify or disqualify themselves early on, even if they can afford you. This honesty also fosters trust. So customers, like you can imagine yourself um, going to any website when you're buying a service or a product. Um, I actually went through this process today as well. Um, went to a website and one of the pages I want to learn about is how much the product costs. So adding a pricing to your website can really help um, show that you're upfront and honest and it, it can really get the relationship off to a great start. Yeah. And what, what I would really emphasize here, it's it's also about qualifying the prospect and making sure that someone is not going to waste their time, not going to waste your time. Um, they can sort of know right away, OK, is this MSP in my you know ballpark range of what I'm sort of am budgeting? There, there's no point in having, uh, you know, someone who can't afford um, your services, you know, um, schedule a, for, uh, a call and, you know, submit a form, get on a call with you. It's, it's a lot of time wasted for everyone. Um, the other thing I, I do understand is, you know, people worry, well, you know, it's not as easy as that. You know, you need to build a custom solution and you have a custom pricing and then you have discounts potentially based on volume. And um, I, I think the point here is not to say that you have to give exact pricing at all times. And actually in this example, it, it also says this is a pricing based on 100 users. So maybe you know, the pricing is lower or higher if there's more or less users. Uh, but you kind of give sort of a benchmark on sort of what you kind of expect your average or ideal client to have. Um, and, and so this is really sort of a, a good way to um, help people sort of self-assess. Uh, and uh, if the one thing I would guarantee you is if you have a pricing page, it will be your number one page on your site. And this is just a testament of how important pricing is to the buying process. Um, so I think if you want to save time, build a pricing page. If you don't want to give exact pricing, just add a range. Uh, and then I guess the, the last point I'd make is um, another thing that can be built are pricing calculators. And so this is another way of sort of, again, giving sort of a range, uh, helping people sort of self uh, assess, you know, uh, how the price would look like based on different parameters. And, and again, like a pricing calculator doesn't necessarily have to be an exact quote, but it's, it's all about helping people get the most important information that they need when trying to buy services from you. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. And just to let you know that these are the websites we've been looking at today, uh, Integris, uh, IT, Lead Services, Wheelhouse IT, Nitava, um, IT Support Guys, and DCGLA. All right. Well, that, that was a great presentation, Chris. Thanks so much for sharing all those examples with us. Um, no problem. If uh, you enjoyed watching this presentation and you want to learn more about uh, MSP marketing in general, um, feel free to go to prontomarketing.com slash MSP dash marketing and we've got a lot of resources listed there in the navigation menu and and you can kind of go from there great thanks bye-bye bye everyone